Like, can you explain what was going on in your early childhood when you got that phone call that one night? I moved back with my mother when I'm about 13 in Brooklyn. Made in Brooklyn. The Made in Brooklyn trademark is known in every corner of the civilized world. And uh, the phone rings, and I pick up the phone, and I hear, uh, you know, first, uh, you know, hardly, I hear four, just like, five, you know, like coordinates, five, you know, six, like numbers, twelve, like seven, six, three, and, and, yeah, but in a strange five, voice, eight, and, but very low, and then, three, and I'm trying to listen, I don't quite, you know, can't get it. And then the volume increases, volume increases. Then Stephen Hawking. <laughs> I am a computer on board a spacecraft orbiting Earth. We are from the future. We are contacting 400 receptive young minds who we can teach our technology to. You must tell us of your own free will if you wish to participate in this project. Yes, no. And I'm thinking to myself, no. I think, you know, internal dialogue, no. But then I feel like an electric shock go from the base of my spine to the back of my head here. And I hear myself saying, yes. Good. You will begin to meet the others in 20 years. I will begin to meet the others in 20 years. So it's got to be time travel. They're telling me what's going to happen 20 years in the future. It's Sunday morning. Sharon's mother brings in the San Francisco Chronicle Sunday paper. I open up the San Francisco Chronicle magazine section, and there's a big multicolor major spread on Stanford Research Institute testing Uri Geller for his paranormal powers. With Uri Geller, this is Edgar Mitchell, who, with his eyes covered, is trying to pick up the number that Geller is sending. Also, we see Wilbur Franklin of Kent State, Harold Putoff, and Russell Targ of SRI, along with Don Schuick, Vice President for Research at SRI. So I say, hi, this is weird, you know? So Monday morning comes, and I say, I gotta call these guys. Get on the phone, call the Stanford Research Institute. Brendan O'Regan gets on the phone, he says, ah, Dr. Safati, we were hoping you would call. This is Twilight Zone now, right? So we were hoping you would call before you left for England. So you already knew I was going to England. Okay? Whoa. Okay? And they said, could you just drive up? They knew where I was. Uh, yeah, not far from uh, yeah, this car. It's an hour and a half. <coughs> Again, say, can you come up to Stanford? I'd like to talk to you. Part of that meeting, you can listen to it because they... The CIA, they tape recorded the entire meeting. What is the subject of this get together? We assume that there are people like Geller and Swan and others we've seen who can do some or all of these things that we think that Geller can do. Okay. We'd like to try and find out what sort of psychic space time they live in. In there, you can hear. Russell Targ. So Russell starts talking about Jim Hurtag and the UFOs as time machines coming back from the future. So Russell Targ talks about it. The Geller also talks about UFOs. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, the, yeah, the reason that I threw this digression in is because Geller feels his information, as you know, comes from UFO or comes from the powers. And then I said, ah, <laughs> I remember that. Hey, listen, what happened to me? Mm. And I tell the story that I told you. I tell the story. Should I mention that experience or do you think it's, um, Which one? you know, what happened to me? Well, well it's kind of funny because it sort of ties in in a peculiar way uh, with the notion of like the, the particular UFO thing that Gala talks about is that of mechanical intelligence, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Well, Hal put off, and he never told me the details, indicated that what happened to me with the phone call happened to him. True enough, yeah. And Brendan O'Regan says, oh yeah, we have data several hundred cases of kids. We have data of that. We know about this. 